it's Ruby and today I'm going to be telling you all of the books that I read in August. I managed to read 30 books this month which is probably a record for me. In July I only read 7. Keep in mind that I am including short stories and essays, critical essays, in this list. I'm not going to be able to talk about each one for a very long time but I'm just going to run through them and give a very brief synopsis. The first book that I read is La Casa de Bernada by Lorca. And this is a Spanish play which is studied at A-level Spanish at my school. The play explores convention and especially right-wing politics and how people can feel very enclosed. The next book is Beck, which was actually shortlisted for the Carnegie Medal. And this is about a young black boy who is sexually abused um, by a priest. And he runs away to Canada and it's his adventures uh, on these roads and the people that he encounters. The next book is Birdsong which, uh, by Sebastian Fawkes, which is again a text that I was asked to read for school. And I loved it. It's a beautiful story commenting on the effects of war you have before, during and after. And how one person has such an impact. Um, one thing that I will say is it is very explicit. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone younger than about 16. The next book is Titanic Survivor Memoirs by Violet Jessup, who worked aboard the Titanic, and it's her experiences of the ship sinking, but it also encompasses her life before and her life afterwards. I find ships pre-World War One really interesting to read about and learn about, and so it really, it gave me a really great insight on what it was like to work on these ships. Then I read Quarantine by Jim Crace, which is about a group of people who decide to spend 40 days in the desert. And these people are actually in the desert at the same time as Jesus when he is trying to resist temptation from the devil. The next book is uh, Run Zan Run by Catherine McPhail. And I've got to say that I wasn't very impressed by this book. I thought that I'd enjoy it because it's a book about... Yes? Mean. Oh my gosh, that really scared me. I thought something had happened to you. Mean. I didn't like it. I've got to be honest. The next book is Paradise Lost by John Milton, which has been on my reading list for such a long time, but it's quite daunting to approach. The language is quite dense and quite tricky. However, I am so glad that I read it. On the back of this, I've actually decided to use this text in my coursework for English, so comparing it to Frankenstein. Leading on from that actually, the next book is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is a book that I actually read back in year 8, but as I said we are studying this for A level and so I was asked to reread it. It was just as incredible the second time. The first time I read it I remember just falling in love with the story. Um, obviously Victor Frankenstein isn't necessarily the most admirable character in the world. He is an incredible character nonetheless. One of my favourite things to do is look at the Christian theology behind the text. I'm really fascinated by how different Christian denominations can approach the same text and how their religious beliefs can shape their understanding of it. And obviously this was extremely prominent in Frankenstein because Shelley was of course inspired by the creation story in Genesis and especially that of Milton. Um, which really does make Paradise Lost the perfect comparison text. I loved picking out the similarities between both texts, having just finished Paradise Lost. I did, however, ponder quite deeply on who represented who, if this really were an allegory, for the creation story. The next book that I read is The Bridge of San Luis Rey, which is about the collapse of a bridge in Peru and how this affects lots of different people. It takes you through the stories of three different people, and at the end of each one, you find this reference to the bridge and so you've got this relationship between all individuals and how everyone's linked. I really enjoyed the Hispanic culture behind this because as you know I studied Spanish last year. The next book is definitely not as cultural and canonical as the last three uh, because it is another Lucy Harrison book which is Dial Alpha Loser. As I said I read her books for nostalgia purposes. The next book is Northern Lights. I think it was a beautiful novel uh, very similar to Harry Potter in some senses. You get that same magical realm, obviously. Um, also something very comforting in it. There's something quite autumnal and wintry and 
it really got me excited for these colder seasons. The next six things are actually short stories and they are from the book Mysteries and Mayhem which was edited by Catherine Woodfine. It's just a collection of mysteries and I do like mystery stories even though these ones were quite juvenile. I haven't finished the whole collection yet but these are the ones that I read. Emily and the Detectives by Susie Day, Rain on My Parade by Alan Canalot, The Mystery of the Green Room by Clementine Boivard, I can't say that, I'm sorry. The Mystery of Diablo Canyon Circle by Caroline Lawrence, Mel Foster and the Hound of the Baskervilles by Julia Golding, and Dazzle, Dog Biscuits and Disaster by Kate Pankhurst. The next book is Wall Jumpers by Peter Scheider, I think it's pronounced, and this is about the Berlin Wall. My sister actually read this and recommended it to me, and it's these stories of people who try to overcome the boundary between the two. In some senses, it actually makes the wall less prominent force and less powerful, but on the other hand, it just affirms how much it limited people in their everyday lives, and also the separation that it entails, because you've got this massive divide between East and West Berlin, people just feeling completely separate from the other half. The next book that I read is Rethinking Life and Death by Peter Singer, which is really just questioning how we can define death, in the current age of medicine. So is death when your heart stops beating or is it when you no longer have any brain activity? And there were lots of case studies that he mentioned. He brings in the key debates of the age, quite outdated, but nonetheless very interesting. Lots of questions regarding euthanasia, voluntary, non-voluntary, active and passive, and also uh, abortion. The next book that I read is The Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing. This is set in South Africa and it's exploring racism. I was actually very fascinated by this book and I'm not going to go into too much detail now but if you'd like me to do another video explaining my views uh, on what I was reading then please let me know and I will film a video on it. The next book is The Uncommoners and this is the first in a series. Again it reminded me a lot actually of Harry Potter because you have two different realms. Um, you have you know the normal world which would be the muggle world and then you've got this separate, very mystical world. It's a realm where you have common and un uncommon objects. It's very witty. A belt is supposed to secure your trousers. And very cleverly, the uncommon object of this is able to help you fly because it keeps you up. I'm really just gonna run through these next few quite quickly because I'm going out in five minutes and I need to be quite speedy now. The next book is Childhood at Green Hedges by Imogen Smallwood, which is the memoirs of Ina Blyton's daughter. As a massive fan of Ina Blyton as a child, I found this really interesting and especially how you can actually use Blyton's own experiences and apply it to her novels and how her life was able to influence her work. It's a classic counter-argument to the author is dead argument, I suppose. Really interesting for anybody who liked Annie Blyton as a child. Then I read two plays which were Blythe Spirit and Antigone, and both of these were for Lambda. The next book I read is The Chimes by Charles Dickens. I'm a massive Dickens fan. He's my favourite Victorian author. It's a great commentary on kind of life and death and appreciating life. Um, then I read Allegiant by Veronica Roth. I've read the other two books in the series, but I never actually finished the Divergent series, and so I'm glad that I finally managed to do it. Then I read Shellshock in France, 1914 to 1918, by Charles S. Myers, which I actually did so I could form a greater knowledge of World War One because we're studying it next year for English. And this is really just exploring Shellshock, a uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the first use of the term Shellshock and how it was observed in the British military. Then I read two other essays on shell shock, and these are the last two things that I read, which are Shell Shock and Mild Traumatic Brain Injury, a historical review by Edgar Jones, 2007, and From Shell Shock and War Neurosis to Post Traumatic Stress Disorder by Mark Antoine Croc. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you're able to derive some new books to read from what I read that last month. Remember that I do have a Goodreads account, the link will be in the description, you can follow my reviews. Also remember that I have published a book, Araminth the Parker's To-Do List, on Kindle. Thank you again, and have a productive week.